highly influential, impactful across the world. And we've seen great grace upon their lives. And we've seen them touch thousands of lives for eternity. We've seen them continue with an eternal perspective, which he and my uh, founding apostle always used to talk about, just souls and disciples, discipling men and women for eternity, um, eternal fruit. And so even uh, as the vice president takes over together with the leadership of uh, Logos Rayma Ministries International, it is that which I really would want to urge you to continue in your father's footsteps. And we've seen the fruit of their womb. I pray that you may also see the fruit of your womb. We've seen the fruit of their hands. I pray that you may see the fruit of your hands. We've seen the fruit of their labor, the fruit of their lips, the fruit of their apostolic and prophetic ministry. And it is that which when I heard about this inauguration, I prayed that one day we may be celebrating for this next generation all those uh, fruits as well as the fruit of the Holy Spirit. There is great evidence of uh, Romans 8, 29 onwards here that whoever God predestines, he calls. He not only calls, he equips. He not only equips, he anoints. And we have seen this of the Mukamori family. And um, we have seen how God always authenticates his own. And we are blessed and we are encouraged as fellow servants of the living God and also still in the trenches. And that is the reason, I would say, to the next generation, many false prophets and so-called false apostles may emerge and mushroom all over the place. But we have remained unmoved, immovable, and shaken, abounding in the work of the Lord because the Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. And so we have seen the fruit of these true apostolic and prophetic people being apostles, Ephiel and uh, and Elna Mukamori, and um, even as they pass this baton stick to the next generation, I just have a, a few things to say from um, from Joshua chapter one, which your mother has already has already started on this journey. Joshua chapter one, the scriptures would say. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, etc. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given it unto you, even as I said unto Moses. Thus saith the Lord unto you, VP. There shall not be any man that shall be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not forsake thee. I will not fail thee. Thus saith the Lord to Logos Rema Ministries International. Be strong and of good courage. Only be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn neither to the right hand nor to the left, that thou mayst, pros mayst prosper whithersoever thou goest. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, stick to the vision, keep to the ethos of the ministry, keep to the spirit, of the letter of the vision of the purpose of the existence of the ministry and God says wherever thou goest you will prosper even as I was with Moses even as I was with Apostle Ephiel Mukamori I will be with you even as I have been with uh, Apostle Elna Mukamori so I will be with you. 
This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that thou mayst observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then thou shalt make your way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest, saith the Lord our God. God bless the reading of his word today, which I know has already ministered to our hearts because it never returns to him void. Many insights there, but I just want in closing to just pick three things. Number one, to the body of Christ at large. For me, I don't know about others, but for me, this is uh, a first official succession uh, plan that I have witnessed and I find it highly commendable. I pray that all of us true apostles may learn, myself included, and follow suit so we don't leave the Church of the Living God in conflict as we have observed in certain houses. Whatever time God chooses to take us home, which is like 200 years from now, but 200 years is such a short time, there needs to be a clear succession plan. And I personally have learned, and I will take Apostle Charles, uh, um, um, uh, Apostle Charles' uh, admonition to us, where he would always say, there is no substitute for exposure. He would always say, copy whatever it is that builds the kingdom of God. And his presence ministers, International Church, the Lord helping us, we will copy. And I pray for the Church of the Living God uh, at large that we may copy. So high commendations to you, Apostle Tsungirirai, for living up to your name um, and for steering the ship so well after the founding apostle went to be with the Lord. And in particular for this decisive step of appointing a successor while you're still alive and well and you can run the relay race with the button stick together and uh, for calling us to witness um, this great dedication by Bishop Colignati, witnessed by so great a cloud of witnesses here on earth, uh, Dr. Goodwill Shana, Prophetess Wutau Nashe, and uh, the leadership of Logos Rema Ministries International, as well as congregants, but also, I believe, also witnessed by the cloud of witnesses um, in heaven. It's very rare for me, and it tells me that you are a very rare general of our time, woman of God, because one true mark of leadership that I learned from John Maxwell is that leaders are decisive. And um, to see um, this happening in your ministry is, 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 is very encouraging. And I'm also particularly delighted to see Apostle Charles' prophetic words coming to pass, where for a number of years before he went home, he kept talking and pushing the next generation and declaring that it is their Kairos moment and that we should continue to raise these champions while we are still alive so that they can run the relay race and run it well, copying from us. That's the first thing I wanted to note. The second thing I wanted to note to Logos Rema Ministries International and the Mkamuri family. I want you to know that the Mkamuri family is one of those rare Levitical families. So Charity, Grace, Theophilus, Shingai, Shalom, Emmanuel, Mordecai, Ahava, and your wives, husbands, and children. Stay united. Stay united. Where there is unity, we know, Psalm 133 says there, God commands a blessing. And I release that commanded blessing upon you as a family and as you stand together tightly in support of your mother and your brother, Theophilus. Where I get this from Acts chapter 1 verse 14, where we learn that among those 120 that Jesus Christ said, tarry ye in 
Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high and you shall receive power to be my witnesses in, 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 in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the uttermost ends of the earth. Among those 120, verse 14 of Acts chapter 1, verse 14, tells me that and they were praying together with the mother of Jesus and the biological brothers of Jesus, James, Joseph, and his whole biological family. So I encourage um, us as apostolic houses to continue to minister as families. There is power in the family you, 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 unit. And uh, uh, to Logos Rhema Ministries International Leadership, as you stand in loyalty and support of this Levitical family, you must know that you are standing on the shoulders of great men and women of God, Apostles Ephiel and Elna, who bear the true marks of apostleship, who bear the true marks of the cross, who we regard, we've always regarded in high esteem as kingdom generals of our generation, not only because of their far-reaching impact on communities, being very practical in their ministries, you know, being the typical James Christians that do not say, go ye, be blessed, you know, be warmed and be full, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, their far-reaching impact on communities um, has, has, has touched our lives and continues to challenge us. And, um, but also because of their God-fearing characters and their godly parenting. I'm so encouraged you know, to see Proverbs 22, 6 at work. Train up a child in the way that he should walk and when he is old, he will not depart from it. As a mother, I'm so encouraged and I pray that many of us uh, listening um, to this inauguration today may be encouraged that the word works, that we work the word and the word will work. And so um, it's not a small thing to be a part of this inauguration. Apostle says, Apostle Paul says, you know, don't bother me, I bear the mark of the cross. So please, don't bother Apostle El Kamori. <laughs> she bears the marks of the cross. What she needs is our prayers and our tender loving care. I say that also being in a similar situation of having to shoulder and soldier on, you know, after founding apostles have gone home. The trials and the tribulations are many, but uh, the Bible forewarned us. So to be forewarned is to be uh, forearmed, where the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So we are encouraged as to see this hardened soldier of the cross, you know, pass on the baton stick while she is still alive to the next generation. Um, yeah, I'm here today as a Barnabas uh, of the ministry to prophetically declare and decree that as you continue to obey, you know, the scriptures, particularly the scriptures I read, uh, standing on the shoulders of the great apostle Ephiel Mukamori, as you build on the godly foundations um, that the two of them have laid because Apostle Mukamori did not do that on his own, I can tell you that uh, just from my own experience uh, but uh, together with his God-fearing you know, God-serving, God-seeking and uh, God-loving wife um, as you faithfully stand in your assigned positions on their shoulders, I declare today that you will see further and so you will go yonder you will take the ministry to higher levels. Your impact will make waves in the realm of the spirit as long as you continue to build on this rock, on this firm foundation that your apostles founded this ministry on. 1 Corinthians 3, 11, For there is no other foundation that any man can lay other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And my last, the third observation uh, to the inaugurated first son, Theophilus Mukamori. No matter what, remain immovable, unshaken, abounding in the work of the Lord, I would say to you, my son. And I want to share my little story, which I know will encourage you. 
because in year 2003, when Apostle Charles Chiriseri was appointed to lead faith ministries as senior pastor, Apostle Charles had always been apostolic in his own right for many decades, you know, founding, helping to found many apostolic works, which I cannot mention for lack of time, but our guest speaker prophetess, uh, Utauna, she can confirm, for example, the founding of uh, Family of God by Apostle Charles Chiriseri with Joe Kayo when he was still a student at, uh, at um, uh, the University of Zimbabwe then. So he basically was ready. He then found, he then handed over to Reverend uh, Andrew Taunashe, who at that time was Youth Witness Ministries leader, and as university students, we used to go and uh, support them every, every, every Saturday, you know, doing street witnessing and so on. So, but anyway, I say this to say, Apostle Charles was ready for this appointment. And I don't know, you may be ready, but I wasn't. Um, I had always loved God with a passion, but I was so shy and I'd always remained in the background in, in ministry. And uh, so the faith ministers ladies nicely organized a welcome bride for me and many kind words and encouragements were, were spoken to me. But for some reason, I never forgot the words from this one lady. Uh, there were many good words, but this one lady, who I know very well, and I know she was very well-meaning, so, you know, I hold nothing against her, even as I share this. She saying, came to me and she said, my friend, you're stepping into very big shoes. The shoes are so big, you need God, you really need to seek God because the shoes are so big. Do you know, Theophilus, those words made me freeze. <laughs> they made me feel so small. They made me feel so incapacitated. They made me feel insecure and downright intimidated. I started imagining trying to lift one leg, you know, in big shoes. How does a shoe move? How do I even move? How do I even move? the other leg, let alone walk, let alone run. It, literally, those words crippled me. But the word of the Lord says, be strong and courageous. I started saying to myself, I, 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 can't, even I can't even run, I, I can't do it. And of course, the enemy was helping me with all the fear and all the negativity and all the negative words. I say this to say, you must reverse every negative word. But listen to my story. God being God, immediately in the same afternoon of that bride, he, God quickly sent another lady to come to me privately after the event and reverse and cancel those first words. God said, this lady came to me and she brought me a pair of stilettos. I, as, as you know, I was crazy about stilettos lovely leather shoes and she came to me and she said God said I must tell you that God knows your size he will not let you wear oversized shoes he does not expect you to run in oversized shoes isn't God so humorous and when I tried those shoes they are the most comfortable to this day leather stiletto shoes that I ever had and right there I had God I had God reassuring me so I'm here to reassure you to say you are not stepping into oversized shoes and you will not be weary you will walk you will not faint you will rise up and soar like an eagle and um, I, 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 I believe in my small way God helped me to make a small impact in faith ministries in those three years uh, but it was after reversing, reversing the negative word. So fill yourself with the word of the Lord. So even as I close, I, I want to say God knows your size. God will give you wisdom beyond your age, the wisdom of God. God has given you the mind of Christ, the tongue of the limit, a pen of the ready writer. So do not be afraid. Just arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen. So run your race, run it well, run to the finished line and finish strong like your daddy. And, uh, and um, uh, continue to be about your father's business. 
I want to end with yeah. Apostle Charles' uh, uh, favorite quotations. He used to love to say to us, life is not a rehearsal. You're on stage right away. And uh, so, Theophilus, life is not a rehearsal. You're on stage right away. <laughs> so run, win those souls, disciple, you know, preach, and pray for the sick, heal the sick, and extend the kingdom of God. But remember, smile, and enjoy every single day of your life and of your ministry. Remember, when you're feeling intimidated, just remember my little story, my little testimony. Remember, God knows your size. God bless you.